How's it going guys? So we're shipping out Monday sales. We had over a hundred sales. There's 102 for $2,500. And yeah, that's a lot. So it's going to take me a lot to get there, but I do want to show you guys some clips of how this inventory came to be. If you guys have never seen this area, this is my new warehouse. I moved out of my garage and I moved to a three office unit in the building that I was currently in, but uh, I expanded upstairs to the seventh floor. My dad, my brother-in-law, my employee, Randy, helped me make this possible, so I really appreciate that. First things first, this is the inventory. We have some Husky racks here. We have five to be exact, and they go all the way up, and then we have some spare room there at the bottom. I have this uh, all-in-one Mac computer that I use for shipping. Now, in this next office, we're gonna see here, we have the shipping station. That's where I did my live for most recently. We have the photo station, which has these two nice windows. We're still waiting on some blinds. And then we have a spare rack here, which currently I just have boxes of shoe inventory down there. Now this closet was kind of a bonus that I didn't expect it to have. And right here we have all our spare cardboard boxes for inventory. And then we have this little rack here. And then that trash bag just holds like small trash bags that you get from thrifting so we can kind of like reuse them and things like that. Right here we have this nice little shelf wall. The shelf wall has a bunch of shoes that are unlisted and then it has just a bunch of other random items right here. And moving into the third office, this is actually my main office. Currently it's not really finished. So far I just have a card table, eight footer, and then I have this wood table I got from a garage sale. I have this bookcase, some lighting items. I have this cart here, which is very important going up and down the elevator with the items. And we actually use that during the move. And then I bought this dolly for the move and then that's just a that's just a bed frame. So anyway, we are making things work here. I'll say once we got moved here, it feels a lot better. Things work a lot more smoothly and I've been having a lot of fun with it. Now, the one thing about shipping out of this area that needs to be corrected and that's, well, this big space, right? So ideally I was thinking maybe I should have a table so that I could put the empty box whenever I'm pulling items and have a place to put them. But I think what I'm going to go with is one of those gray carts that has the handle on one side and I'm going to have a tablet on that cart, maybe build a stand for it so I can have my hands free, roll the tablet with the cart around and then I can go to each section because currently right now I have to go back to the computer every single time. So I'm going to have to do that 102 times and it's not like a long distance, but that's a lot of steps going back and forth that's going to make this extremely slow. So whenever my employee is not working, she's not able to call it out for me to go pick it out of the inventory, so I gotta do it myself. And to help with shipping, the sponsor of today's video is Teamu. So the reason I went with Teamu is they have free shipping on all their items, and they have this one product that's a thermal printer, eight and a half by 11 sheets, and it's perfect for international labels. Check this thing out. So whenever I got this printer, what was great about it was, one, it was free shipping, and two, you can pretty much take it wherever, and it's a small profile. It's very simple to use, it's corded, you can also do it wireless, but I found it easiest just to do corded, and then you just plug in the thermal paper. I did buy some extra sheets of paper because every time I used to get the international labels, I would have to drag out like a big printer. Now I can use this one on the go. It's very easy, and I don't have to carry and lug around a giant printer just to get those pesky international labels taken care of. Another item I got with Timu was this holder that goes on the side of my desk. I'm gonna be able to do more content with this. It's like a ring light that can also hold your phone. It's got the three different light settings and you can go in the brightness all the way down or all the way up. This is gonna increase the content for your viewing pleasures. Another thing about Timu is if you did decide to go with that printer or any of the items I'm talking about, like this viral car vacuum, if that goes down in price later, you guys can request to get money back from Timu because the price did drop and you have 30 days to do that and I've already seen that thermal printer drop in price from when I got it so I'm definitely going to have to follow up with them to get that money back. Make sure to download the TMU app in the description below. You can use my code and then you can get a hundred dollar like coupon bundle based on that code with the items that you purchased through TMU. Thank you TMU for sponsoring this video and now back to the video. Also sold a pair of shoes. These are the Brooks Beast. They don't have any inserts. They sold for $36, one cent, and it was $8.99 shipping. So he's all in for nine plus 36 is $45. So Brooks Beast is a, is a pretty uh, common one that I go for. It had really good treads, and a lot of runners like to put their own inserts in, so still sold for pretty good profit. All right, so we're at the shipping station. 
it'll take a little bit of time to knock these out, no doubt. First thing I typically like to do, one, I like to apologize for not having my microphone. I hope the sound sounds okay. I'll find out in post and I'm probably gonna post it anyway, whether it sounds like perfectly crisp or not, because there's many videos I made without a microphone and you know, you guys seem to like them. So the first thing I do is I knock out the shoe shipment because the shoes, the inventory is not in the SKU system. So it says like box rack four or something like that. So that means when you scroll all the way down on the sale menu, uh, you're going to find uh, that item. So it's real easy to pack that one up. The next thing I like to do, though, is I like to get the combined orders. Now, this can take a little bit of time. It can take a little bit of creativity. And what I mean by that is right now I'm using the 14 and a half by 19s for the poly mailers. But if this one person, I think they ordered like eight items. Sometimes that eight items doesn't fit well in the poly mailer. So that means I have to get a box. I have some of the eBay boxes that I bought with the coupon. You get a coupon every quarter if you have a store. So um, that's the first thing I like to do. And then I have about five orders where it's just two, uh, two items together. So those will typically go in a, you know, a legal flat rate or they'll go ground advantage, just whichever one is cheaper. A lot of people ask me, can you change the shipments? Um, the way I see it is I have standard shipping for eBay and I think that's two to five days estimated time. So I just ship uh, the cheapest one possible. That's not longer than five days, which most of them are within five day shipment. The best way to figure out your combined orders, it's to go to the bulk shipping label section and uh, you want to check all of them. So it says like a checkbox to select all, and then you want to deselect uh, the combined order and then you go to remove. And then that leaves just that combined order. And once that's there, then you'll be able to uh, pick those items and figure out how you want to package them and then print just that one label. Then you have to like, you know, go back into the bulk shipping to get the long list again and just repeat the process. That's the easiest way I've found because eBay does not always combine the orders. A lot of people have issues with this. Sometimes when the buyer buys it correct, it'll all be in one bundle on the actual eBay, like, you know, ready to ship page. But sometimes they'll be separate and then you'll end up printing two labels for the same customer and it's a big problem. So this uh, bulk label, um, you know, process the way I do it, that that seems to be the best method for me. So this guy got four, or no, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he got eight shirts. He spent between ten and fourteen dollars per shirt. So let's pull those items. All right, perfect. So yeah, as you can see here, it's going to be a bit tight for that poly mailer, but I'm going to give it a shot just because. Uh, it's gonna be a lot easier if it can fit. It'll just be like one big pillow, pretty much. There we go. Dang, I actually missed one. That's wild. Okay, let's try this again. Boy. There we have it. Eight items. So that's probably the max on this, but it's gonna make it. Okay, now we're gonna put some tape to reinforce it. Then we're gonna tape these corners in because sometimes they put these down conveyor belts and the corners will be good. They'll get stuck on the conveyor belt and tear open. So, there you go. Basically it. Let's see what it weighs. Six pounds, four ounces. We'll put six ounces, six ounces just to be sure. And then I don't have my tape measure with me, so I've been using the yardstick. And it is 14, 14 by 12, 14 by 12 by nine. So that's, that's pretty big dimensions. 14 by 12 by nine. I wonder what it's gonna end up costing. So it's gonna be $13.70 on the shipment. Wow. It's pretty good for eight shirts. Would have been nice if it was uh, cheaper, but they're pretty far away, I think. If it was in Texas, it'd be a lot cheaper. All right, so we're gonna run that back. The problem with doing this is it takes a second to populate all the labels on the bulk shipping. So that's a little annoying. 
Let's see, we got 205, 37, and 38. What? I think these just came in. <laughs> that was wild. So I just got another combined order right whenever I refreshed. So this is two Johnson and Murphy shirts. Now these are the XC4. That is a uh, like four-way stretch material. It's only 12 ounces for two shirts. So that's really good. But yeah, we're going to pack this one up just because... It was a little confusing. I was looking and didn't see any for this skew. It was in the inventory still. So we're going to ship this one out. It's 532 ground advantage. Dang, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, combined orders are by far the best. When you have volume like this and a lot of the same shirts, a lot of the same sizes, a lot of the same prints, patterns, you're going to get a lot of combined orders. And this weekend was great. I mean, $2,500 in sales for one weekend. And I don't think I even listed, um, I think I listed 15 items on Sunday and I didn't list any on Saturday, so. We did a lot of the Easter egg hunt stuff with my son. He was having a blast doing the Easter egg hunts and finding all kinds of eggs. And Come on, Seth, scoot on over. There it is. <laughs> Y'all are matching too. <laughs> he had it at his daycare and then the local park uh, nearby our house was having one. I guess a couple businesses put it together. We got two shirts here. These are some uh, Nike Tiger Woods polo and then like a Nike. Oh, another Nike Tiger Woods polo. So we bought this red one and this other one. They only went for six or seven dollars and sixty cents and seven dollars twenty three cents. So really not much money here. Nope, oh, ground advantage, still cheaper. See, I've noticed ground advantage, if it's over a pound, sometimes it's $7.84. And if you did the flat rate with the small envelope, it's going to be $7.99. So it's 15 cents cheaper, ground advantage. And that's the top dog when it comes to shipping, ground advantage. All right, so we got through the combined orders, and I had to stop the video because there was too much of a lag, like waiting for them to load, and then, you know, like, finding them in the boxes. Now I can go in order because they're in sequential order from you know lowest numbers all the way to the highest numbers and that's gonna go a lot smoother. And also I can kind of keep the conversation going like while I'm working. So that's gonna be a really nice benefit. So I've been shipping for probably like 20 minutes. I got through one of the boxes. A couple things have happened. One, I've got a lot of shipping to do and it's almost lunchtime. It's 15 till noon. I usually eat at like 12 o'clock. So I'm gonna have a super late lunch today and it's kind of like dragging me down. I feel really tired. I don't know if it's just from the long weekend of you know being really active or if it's because I'm standing at this shipping station. That could also be it. This is just kind of what happens. That's why like I usually pack on the weekends. I like to run a live. There was just so much going on with Easter egg hunts and things like that that I just, I didn't get around to it. So I'm kind of paying for it now and I'm thinking, should I go eat and come back and finish or just have like a really late lunch? I don't know. I was watching some, uh, or listening to some YouTube while I was shipping that first box and it kind of got me thinking like, you know, I need to think more about my brand and my business and what I'm trying to achieve with YouTube because a lot of people, you know, they're watching, you might be watching to find out like what items I'm selling. Like this is a pair of Travis Matthew jeans, which I don't come across them very often and you know sold for like 1750 plus shipping so nothing great but you know travis matthew peter millar those types of golf brands have other styles than just polos and they sell you know pretty well but i was thinking like you know a lot of you guys are looking for what brands sell and then whenever i'm making these videos i'm thinking all right well what am i trying to achieve well you know, initially I was watching YouTube because I was trying to learn how to do this well, pretty much like a lot of people are doing, you know, watching, figuring out like how to do this better. And I don't, I don't really watch other YouTubers to try to improve anymore. I'm kind of set in my ways with how things are going and they've been going smoothly. So it's like, why change? And then today I decided to change something because <laughs> it definitely was, uh, it, it makes sense to do. I don't know how much faster it is, but it has to do with these labels. So I used to tear every single one off, right? 
rip it and then um, stick the label and throw it in the trash. Well now, I don't have to throw it in the trash, I can just keep ripping them off and uh, it makes like this really cool long piece of trash. Maybe it's a little faster. I haven't like timed myself. I know it's marginally faster, right? But I think more important than that is you'll have less paper dust around the cutter of the Rolo. So if you guys have been using a Rolo, which I do have linked uh, below if you guys are interested, which if you buy it for $200, which I don't know if they're still 200, they might've gone down in price. Maybe they're like 180 or something. I get a kickback because it's, it's an affiliate link. But if you've been using it for a while and you've noticed that uh, sometimes there's specs on the barcode or like, you know, it's just not coming out perfectly black. Don't change like the DPIs. Uh, I think that's dots per inch. Don't change any of the settings on it or the speed for that matter, because what it is is it's paper dust by the cutter. Now paper dust happens, you know, with the labels that you buy, there'll be dust on them just cause you know, they're cut in a factory and they just get dusty. Not like, not like dirt dust, but just paper dust from it being uh manufactured but then there's also paper dust based on how many times you tear off the label you know it creates just a fine little mist of dust so over the years you're gonna have a lot of dust and you know depending on how much you ship you'll have to clean it from time to time so I have been noticing that you know I have to clean mine pretty regularly probably like once every two weeks maybe once a month now nah, I'm not really sure maybe every Maybe once every two weeks. Yeah, it's kind of annoying when I'm doing labels because I get new sales coming in and it, it messes up the traffic, like the flow of traffic of shipping because they'll jump the order of the SKUs and then I think I missed it and then I may go look for it and it may be in inventory, but that's kind of a problem. So anyway, I decided to make a change because a commenter, I think it's Josh Graff and I believe he has a reselling channel possibly. I think he does he's out of a storage unit pretty sure not like where he lives like where his business is a lot of people go that route anyway he had told me uh you know i think it was daily refinements method is this and and he's been doing it to save time which you know if i'm if i'm gonna copy you know daily refinements methods you might as well copy most of the things he does you know not just some of them which you know he he took the time to figure out based on timing himself and speed and and things like that how to improve the whole process of running this business. Another thing I've noticed because I am standing here in one spot, uh, I probably need to get a anti-fatigue mat. Now I've got one for Randy here. This is an anti-fatigue mat that she uses and it got tore up somehow. I probably need one for the shipping station because it does make a difference when you're standing in the same spot for over an hour, you know, you're gonna feel, you're gonna feel the floor. And I'm definitely kind of feeling it. And I'm, I'm more so just hungry. Another reason why I think I'm, you know, like, I'm not like frustrated or upset or anything, but I am kind of, uh, not hangry, but I'm, I'm hungry. Like I want to eat, I don't want to ship. Like I want, <laughs> I want this done, but I don't want to do it, you know? And I'm sure a lot of people get that way on Mondays after the weekends. I went for a run this morning. So I do have the recumbent bike. I've been hitting the recumbent bike, uh, Oh no, this one's, I messed this one up. Uh, I don't know, we're gonna go with it. It's, I think it's over in weight by 0.1 and I probably need to avoid the label and redo it, but I'm gonna let that one slide and see if they, if they hit me with it. Just because I really don't wanna waste the time to do it. I gotta keep this flow going with items. This is a cool shirt. This one sold for 19, 33 plus shipping. So almost 30 bucks on the cool shirt. That's like a mountain climbing. No, no, not mountain climbing, but like an outdoorsy brand. They got mountains on the logo. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, anyway, I went for a, a run this morning. So you guys have seen, I have a recumbent bike at my house, which I use for cardio. And the problem with the recumbent bike, because you uh, just sit there and ride, you can have your phone and you can take it kind of easy and it's not as uh, it's not as intense as going out and running, like hitting the pavement. So 
What I did though was I used the recumbent bike for about 10 minutes to get warmed up. And then um, when I went out, when my wife and son left, uh, I was kind of warmed up and then I decided to go for a jog. And I went probably about two miles. And I was running, you know, pretty regularly and then I hurt my calf because I wasn't like warming up or, sh you know, doing any type of, any type of warm up. I'd pretty much just go cold and straight into a run for like a couple miles and it caught up to me. So I got a little afraid of running and exercising and then I decided to, uh, you know, take it a little more serious now because, you know, I'm going to Florida in April and it's, uh, I don't want to look too disgusting with my shirt off, you know, so I'm going to start running again, try to trim up before the trip, and I'd like to stay that way too, you know. There's something to be said about being, you know, a little heavier and having a lot more strength, and then obviously you'd like to stay small and continue having the strength, but it's a lot, lot easier said than done for sure. But I do think being smaller in general is probably better for your longevity. Here's a good sale. This is Rag and Bone. It's a pair of jeans. And these sold for $35 plus shipping. Rag and Bone's a tremendous brand. I'm pretty sure it's both men and women's, but uh, the men sell really well for this brand. Ground advantage. Pretty much everything over a pound is gonna be like mostly $7 and up. Seven sixteen on this one. Sometimes it'll be six something, but yeah, so I imagine at the end of the year, the shipping, you know, I averaged, I think it was about $5 an item last year in shipping. It's probably going to creep up a little bit, I imagine. Well, we're about two boxes down, though, so I have uh, three more to go, and it's 11.56. So, you know, I think I started this, this section of the video because I, you know, I, it all looks like one video. It is one video to you, but for me, it's like multiple clips of uh, hitting the phone, you know? And it's been, what, like 10 minutes maybe, and I've already gotten through a pretty good amount of orders. And this is really why you set up a space like this. You want it to be as seamless and smooth as possible. And once you figure it out, you're gonna notice that, um, you know, shipping is a pretty painless process now. I used to ship as an everything seller, so I would constantly be looking for boxes. I mean, sometimes like a single item would take me like 30 minutes to pack, and sometimes I'd be if I even had the box, you know. Now there are better methods I've seen, like as I got away from being an everything seller, I think it was Osborne of Thrift just has bubble wrap and he just wraps the crap out of it, all kind of, kind of messy, but it's so padded that he just puts it in, in a box, and it's not like... I was too um, OCD about making it perfect and using kind of like the least amount, but it would still protect it. Whenever I saw uh, that guy ship, he just was like, you know, you just grab it, hold it with one hand, wrap it around, wrap it the other way, and then throw it in a box. And I was like, that's a smart way to do it. And uh, when I get, if I ever get back into selling everything type items, that's definitely how I'm going to go about it. And I also like the packing paper, like the craft rolls, the big brown rolls. Those do really well too. This is an untuck it. Now I'm still buying untuck it. This is a 2XL solid gray. It sold for 13 plus 8.99. So that's $22 shift on an untuck it shirt. I'm really not spending more than $4. If I spend five on, on an untuck it, it's usually going to be like a 3XL or bigger. Uh, I really don't like spending more than four bucks on them because they're just not as good as they used to be. Okay, so this is the first bag. Oh, it's finished. And I have that black wagon I showed you earlier. That's where this is going to go. And we're going to get another bag and get going with this next round. This is a pair of uh, Ralph Lauren cargo shorts. And they're a big size, size 42. Sold for 15 plus shipping, so $24. That's probably about where you're gonna be with these. Now, maybe if it's like that perfect size, you know, 34, 36, 34 or 36, you know, that might sell for 20 plus shipping, so like 29, but uh, really tough to get more than that on the Ralph Lauren cargo shorts. 
I'll still pick them up though. If they're cheap, I'll still pick them up. It's just not great. Cause you know, this is an $8 label now. So as you guys know, colored poly mailers with gyro pack, Taylor 10, you get your 10% off. They're awesome. I like them. I've been using them for a long time. They're my best sponsor so far. Uh, this isn't even their sponsored video. Like, you know, I'm not gonna go too in depth on them. I just like to shout them out because, you know, when you guys buy those, I get a kickback too. So it's really a win win for both companies, me and them. This is a Venice uh, Burnout, Lucky Brand. Venice Burnout? I always say Venice. Venice. And it sold for like nine plus shipping. So, like, $18 here, not a whole lot of money. There's a nice Ralph Lauren. This is like a black and almost like a royal blue short sleeve polo. And something like this, it's a color pattern that I don't see very often, so I'm, you know, more more likely to go for it. But, you know, the, the shirt's faded. It's a polo. It's faded. And um, sold for 20 bucks shipped, so not a whole lot here, and you're still paying 515 on the label. So it's, it's okay. You know, it's not great. But it sells, you know. The stuff I buy sells. That's what's most important. I don't have a lot of stuff that just sits around. Things all sell at a certain price. And the ideal situation is people buy multiple. Which we had earlier. Here's an untuck it. We talked about untuck it already. This is a short sleeve button shirt. Only five ounces though on the weight, so this label should be around the five dollar mark, I think. Yeah, four forty three. So that's good. This is a cool looking one. This is a geometric like liquor items, you know, like cocktails, margarita glass, stuff like that. Find out where this one came from. Ah, that's a Peter Millar. So that's a great one. I talked about Peter Millar earlier. So this one sold for $49 plus shipping. And the reason it sold is because it has that geometric like tight small geometric type items so 49 plus shipping on that if you're around golfers or you're around a bunch of wealthy areas like uh, they're gonna have those types of shirts because well one they're awesome and golfers like to wear awesome stuff when they're on the course so they can you know talk about their awesome shirts that's pretty great uh i've paid upwards to 20 dollars for a used pair or a used pair. A used polo just like that. I paid upwards to 20 bucks. Because I know they're going to go for at least 40 plus shipping. This right here, giant pair of jeans. This is the Levi 560 model. So Levi 560s are going to be, uh, I think, the best selling model out there. It's the loose fit. You can use loose or baggy for the uh, keywords. And this is a huge size. So... Huge sizes, typically, they're going to be on the racks. You know, people aren't going for them. And probably paid like $8 for it. Most jeans I find now are 8 bucks. seems like. So it's over 2 pounds on the label. And yeah, ground advantage is eight twelve. I could fit it in the small flat rate, but I think it'd be too tight. So I'm just going to pay the extra $0.13 cents and not try to fight it into that bag. But yeah, I love getting the 560s. It's, I almost buy them no matter what. I mean, I don't really like buying the beat-up ones too much. Usually, I don't I don't like having multiple holes and stuff like that. But if it's in um, fair condition, you know, I'll pick it up. All right. Under Armour Project Rock. It's a sleeveless hoodie. This one went for 19 plus shipping, so... I've said this a couple times on the channel, anything Nike, you know, Under Armour, like a hooded, sleeveless, like workout, tank top hoodie style, that stuff sells really well. Uh, Project Rock is a line from Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. You'll see it because it's got like the bull logo. Now right here we have a Tommy Bahama. This one was floral, a short sleeve button shirt, and it went for 15 plus shipping. It was really cool floral though. so. The cooler the Tommy Bahama looks, the more expensive it's gonna sell for. And uh, I mean, my thrift stores, they're pricing Tommy Bahamas at like $16, so. I got lucky with that one, but most of the time I can't even buy those. Uh, they're just too expensive. 
Another Peter Millar here. This is a summer comfort. This is a uh, XLT. So this sold for 18 plus shipping. So, you know, close to that $30 mark. So our shipping is nine bucks. And uh, yes, if you're wondering, people do have a problem with the shipping being that high. But I don't care because I'm buying the label and having to deal with all the items and, you know, storing them and keeping them, you know, organized, all that good stuff. So I, I'm okay charging that much. If they want to send an offer, they can, which, you know, plenty of people do. Most of my sales come from offers. Uh, that's just how that goes. This one is a Zegna Sport, and it has uh, metal buttons. So, Emerge Leondo, Emerge, uh, uh, Emerge Gialdo, Emerge Gialdo, something like that. Uh, Zegna, that is a brand of clothing, and Zegna Sport is one of their lines, and this is a metal button shirt. So, anytime I find Levi metal buttons or any other brand with metal buttons, I typically pick it up. This sold for $24 plus $8.99 shipping, and that's a really good sale. So we are going to go with it. And I'm actually getting pretty quick with pulling the label off. Uh, I had a few problems trying to pull the label off, like I wasn't getting the peel off correctly. It was kind of messing up. So yeah, I'm kind of liking it now. We've got an Under Armour. This is a 3X short sleeve polo. It was $12.63. Now it's a 3XL. It is a solid color, but it's a 3XL. 3XL polos are, they're hard to find. A lot of those guys are shopping from home or they're significant others buying them stuff. They're not really out in the stores, you know, buying shirts because they're just, you know, trying them on in the store. A lot of times they're just ordering them for, to their house and then messing with them when it gets there. And a lot of people are honestly doing that these days just because of the convenience factor of ordering online. And that's why we are able to have a business because people are staying at home and shopping, which is good. I'll do the shopping for them, you know, which I don't enjoy shopping. Uh, sourcing is probably my least favorite part of this business. I don't even know what my favorite part of this business is anymore. You know, maybe making YouTube videos, it's, it's pretty fun. But yeah, even, even when I find like a really nice score, I just don't, I don't get too excited about it. Shipping is, shipping is fine. Like getting the money is fine, I guess. Getting paid by, by eBay is fine. Uh, this is a silver Zach jean. So Zach is one of their lines. Uh, I think it's boot cut, relaxed boot cut possibly. And yeah, this sold for $26 plus uh, $8.99 shipping. A lot of times these will be anywhere between $14 and $20 in the thrift store, but occasionally I can catch them for like $8. i will pay $10 for these as well. Uh, $26 plus shipping. You know, it's okay. One thing I'm starting to realize is the big gaps in profit, you know, like the big home run wins, those are fewer and fewer uh, in the thrift, you know. Say I go to a store, are any of the items $20 profit? I don't know, sometimes. I mean, sometimes there's a few, but other times, you know, they're just they're just not there. Now there's plenty of them that are $7 profit to like maybe $12 profit, that range. And then sometimes, you know, you gotta pay, you gotta pay up a little bit just to get into that range. And that's, it's a problem for some people because it can take a long time to see the money back. You know, some of these are 30% sell through rate items, meaning 30% of the year they'll sell. I, I don't know. I, I don't really want to get into thinking about sell through rate, but it, it's based on the 90 day history. So 100% sell through means it sells 100% uh, of the time within 90 days, maybe. Is that right? So 30% would be four. So it means it's going to sell that year, I guess. Here's a Southern Point company. So Southern Point has a dog logo on it, which I think is adorable. And sold for 18 plus shipping. This is a, a pretty good brand. I don't come across it too often and a lot of people don't, uh, they don't know to pick it up because it's, uh, it looks pretty basic, you know? But I looked it up, I figured it out. It's a good one, Southern Point. So now everyone else knows about it. You can go find it, but yeah. And I'm probably only gonna put uh, brands that are like, you know, I'll pop up the brand for that one, but 
not everyone's gonna be up there because I, I have a lot of the same sales, you know, so I'm not gonna bring it up every time. And like Wrangler, like most of you guys know what Wrangler is. This one's a pearl snap, but it's a black and blue striped shirt. So it's a little fancier and it sold for $18 plus shipping. So that's really good for a Wrangler. Uh, well, it's a pearl snap, but it's, it's pretty good. Typically that doesn't happen. Usually it goes for less money, but that's a good one there. That was global shipping as well. All right, what we got here? Domino's. So this is a short sleeve polo by Domino's. I sell Domino's. A lot of the pizza companies, their uniform polo sell. Okay, this one only sold for six thirty one plus eight ninety nine shipping, and it had a big stain on it. So, had I seen the stain, I wouldn't have picked this up. You want to get them in really good condition, but. You know, they're working at a pizza joint, so like a stain on the front, it's not going to stop it from selling for, uh, what is that, 15 and some change. So if you pick them up for $1, sell for 15 ship, it's, uh, it's a little bit of profit. We can pull up the profit calculator to find out. Okay, buy it now price is going to be $6. Item cost, $1. Shipping is 5 So yeah. If you pay one dollar, it ships for five, and you sell it for fifteen shipped, it's six dollars and forty-seven cents. So that is absolutely a range you can survive in. You just have to sell ten thousand of those a year to make sixty k. But how do you get items that cheap? That would be like sourcing the bins people talk about. You could uh, go to garage sales. You could try to figure out where donations are coming in. You can do buyouts of clothing. Like you can offer, hey, I buy out uh, estate sales or I buy out before estate sales. Say somebody doesn't want to have a whole estate sale but they're still needing to move their estate. You can say I can buy all your clothes. Uh, you can donate what is totally bad, you know, but if you're paying zero to a dollar, you only need to sell it for really 14 to make that $5 profit. but. It's just a different game. And those items might take longer to sell. So that's another problem with that method. But if you have a lot of space and a lot of you know, patience and, and want to understand that market, uh, if you can acquire that inventory for cheap, then you can, you can definitely make that work. So what, what I'm doing is you know, I'm cherry picking and I'm still taking like low, low money because uh, if I cherry pick enough, then eventually, you know, I'll have big sales, right? Like I'll have home runs, but uh, the lifeblood of the store is that seven to eleven dollar profit, and that just keeps it keeps rolling over and stuff. Like you see a lot of people now selling on whatnot, and what they're doing is, you know, they're maybe they spend a hundred dollars, but then they have a uh, five hundred in sales and then fees, so they're making like let's just say two fifty each whatnot, and maybe it takes start to finish six hours like that's doing the sale uh all that stuff and that's that's a really good way to do it now that doesn't add in the sourcing time so maybe it's longer than six hours but that's just another method people are doing to to sell things quickly at like a low profit but you know they're seeing their return fast i am not seeing that return at the same speed because a lot of these items have been sitting for a little while but when you put in so much work up front and you have such a big inventory and then you run like discounts and promote listings and whatever discounts you want, every day you get sales. So it, it gives you the feeling of like, I didn't work much today, but I keep seeing results like, you know, some of those other sellers that are doing it a different way. And that's, I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, but that's that's pretty much what it is, you know. I'm okay making three bucks on an item because I know I know I make a lot more money on others. I'm just trying to keep them going every single day so that every day there's money hitting my account and I can deploy it in different means. We got two boxes left. So yeah, it looks like 15 minutes a box. Each box is probably like 20 something items maybe. So we're, we're moving. I do think it helps uh, talking while I do it. So here's Scully. Scully is a Western brand, and I think they're a little up and down with the prices on them. Meaning like some stuff is really, really high end, some stuff is not. This was a vest, it sold for $23.74 plus shipping. 
and uh, I've got some long sleeve button shirts from them, and I don't know if they've been selling or not. I, I can't really remember, but um, I'm still picking them up. I think they may have a line that is a little cheaper, possibly, and that could be the case. Another thing, too, that uh, increases the speed while I work, I just realized it, and I don't know if I've talked about it a lot, um, is this mouse. It has a back and forward button on the side, so after I print the label and it starts printing, I press back twice. I call it double back. And um, that gets me right back to the, the list of items to ship. So you don't have to travel upwards and uh, find that back button on the window. You can just hit double back with the mouse. And most mice have that feature. And that's, it's a game changer. This one's a pair of Prana pants. I got a bunch of them the same size, and hopefully this buyer likes those and comes back and buys the rest, but they sold for 15 plus shipping, and they're just like, I don't know, just chino, like, hiking style pants. This is a Nike short sleeve polo. This is a 3XL uh, in orange, so it sold for 12 plus shipping, so, you know, five bucks into 21 ship, like, I'll do it all day long. I pretty much do it all day. And it's good. It's hard to do, I'll tell you that. When you're at the thrift store and you see that, you know, uh, zero flaw item that's in the right size, it's the right brand, but you know it's going to take maybe six months to sell. And you're spending five today to make, you know, not that much money later on, like seven bucks later on. It's a hard thing to do. A lot of people can't do it. And I get it. I totally get it. I think a lot of it changes when you have more capital. You know, when you're not like hurting for uh, paying your bills that week or whatever. Like, I'm good, you know, if I don't sell anything for a while, I can, I can pay my bills. But before, when I started this, like, I did have to sell things. Um, I had to be very careful. Like, I may, only had, may have only had like $100 a week to spend on sourcing stuff or you know so if I bought a couple items and they didn't sell then I didn't have any money to go sourcing again and I had to like aggressively try to get those to sell and then there was a lot of pressure on like what I was buying I was like I have to sell this fast and uh, over time you build up a little bit of a nest egg with your business you know and then it gives you a lot more flexibility on how you can run it so that's uh that's one thing that I've noticed with more money is I have, I have more patience. You know, I don't mind spending the five and getting seven, six months down the road because there's not a lot of places you can get that kind of a return that that's for sure gonna happen, you know? Cause I'm, I'm very confident in all the items I pick up. Like I know I'm not losing money on this. The only time that happens is if there's some type of flaw and it's gotta be pretty bad. Cause usually you can still break even at the very least, but yeah. That is, a, that is a part of this business. I mean, a lot of people don't really talk about it as much. You know, a lot of people just talk about the bolos and the dropping items while you're trying to ship. Yeah, they, they talk about all the good stuff and the fun stuff, and they're like, you know, thrifting is my therapy or, like, all my reseller friends. And then, you know, they're like, they're making 12000 a year, like, whatever. And it's not... It's good money, you know, profiting a thousand a month. But if you're really trying to like make make enough money to not have to clock in for somebody else, you have to do better. Like, and you have to treat it a little bit more serious, you know. And I'm I'm all for having fun and stuff like that, you know. But also, I I know there's certain things that I need to do every day, every week. Uh, to keep this thing going, you know, I can't just not source for weeks. Like I got to source pretty much every week. Shirts like this, Swannies. This is a uh, a pretty wild name for a brand. It's called Swannies. It's a golf brand. It's a geometric polo. I thought it was worth a lot more money. It sold for 17 plus shipping, which is good in my range. That's really good. But uh, I thought it was a little cooler, so I may have spent like seven up seven bucks on that because I did think it was better, but. You got to do that with new brands to, to figure out what the actual value is of that item. You know, you can't just, 
you can't just always know what it is because you know sometimes you can't even look up the solds properly like ebay's messing up with their their app sometimes so i'm not getting good data out there it's been a real hindrance it used to be so good and then they changed up how they how they do it and you know it, it could be the amount of resources it takes to populate all that stuff correctly that they're using somewhere else uh recently somebody said they weren't able to download the listing quality report that shows you like your rank or whatever amongst other sellers in your category. Maybe they were just tired of keeping that data and they're like, look, we can save a lot of energy or however they calculate, you know, website usage type stuff like that. I, I don't know, I'm not a fear science guy, but they just got rid of it. So maybe it, that's has to do with that, you know? And it's, it's now when you're searching solds, sometimes you look it up and there's like, you know, 300 listed with four solds and you're like no this brand's definitely sold more than four in the last 90 days like a hundred percent sure but it's hard to uh it's hard to check it because it just doesn't work and i've had the same problem on desktop even it's not even just the app i've had the problem on desktop so i don't know if like the title has to be exactly the same this is from that brand hook huk hook this went for 20 plus shipping so 1999 plus shipping that's one of the better sales for this brand that I've seen in a while. And I can tell you it's because seasonality. You know, I've been buying this brand all year. So hopefully they start selling for more like this one did because I got a lot of them. And it's a short sleeve button shirt that's like vented or whatever. So yeah, this is a good sale here too, this next one. It's by the brand Faherty. And this one was new with tags and I paid um, I paid sixteen dollars for it, new with tax, I, or it may have been seventeen, and it sold for forty plus shipping. So if it was used, I definitely wouldn't have spent that. But because it was new with tax, I felt confident um, that I could get some more money out of it, and I absolutely did on that one. So that was nice. Faherty's great, man. It's a size medium, but I put it on. I'm just I'm too much. I think I'm like right between a medium and a large because I know a lot of larges are, are too big, but this medium was too tight. And a lot of men's clothes, it seems like they they target like slimmer builds, certain brands do. And uh, maybe they're one of them that does that. So that kind of stunk. Oh yeah, there's a couple good ones in a row here. So this is a Lululemon long sleeve button shirt. And again, on this long sleeve button shirt, I'm pretty sure I paid $10 for it. I don't know if I went any higher than that, but it sold for 35 plus shipping. So that's 44 bucks on a Lululemon long sleeve button shirt and it's under eight ounces. I probably need to know, okay, if I see Lululemon long sleeve button shirt, I could probably pay up to 20 bucks for them because I'll make, you know, 44 and that's still a really good profit. And that's what changed. Okay, so that thinking like, are you okay to spend 20 to make 10, you know? Because if you are, you're gonna buy up all the Lululemons that are 20 bucks, and nobody else is gonna get them on half off day. Like no one's gonna get them at all. So if you understand that, that that ends up making a lot of people not go to your area anymore. It makes it it makes you get more profit than other people. Like that's just how it goes. But I get it if you can't if you can't spend it or you don't you know say say there was a flaw in that one, I definitely wouldn't have got 44 bucks. This shirt here, probably one of the best brands. This is CC Filson. This is this was a set, this was a size medium, but I didn't even try it on because I didn't want to keep it. You know, the shirts that I keep, like this is a Ralph Lauren. It's got a stain towards the bottom, but like this is the kind of stuff that I keep to wear because it is a nice looking shirt. I got some beige shorts on here. They're actually Lululemon shorts that I decided to keep for myself. I paid nine bucks on the shorts, but yeah, this is CC Filson. It went for forty two. 50 plus 8.99 shipping so a $50 shirt just plain blue and uh yeah cc filson is tremendous still really good i've sold shirts like that with stains here's eaton contemporary now eaton is a pretty good brand this one is pink purple gingham plaid sold for 17.50 plus shipping and yeah you know not everything i sell is five dollars plus shipping or whatever or eight dollars but uh 
you know, every now and then you run into some good ones. Eaton is a, a pretty tricky one because I know there's some lines of Eaton that go for a lot more money. This one, uh, seventeen fifty plus shipping is not bad though, because I know I'm only spending like four bucks on that one. Here's a Marvel Classics. This was like a mustard colored shirt. It had the little Marvel guy logo on it, and I don't know if I undersold it or not. It went for, uh, again, seventeen fifty plus shipping. So. Ken Pippi bought it, so thank you, Mr. Pippi. But uh, I don't know. It's a pretty cool shirt, and when I come across shirts that I don't see very often and I don't have a lot of data on it, I lean towards, like, sell it for a profit rather than, like, hold out forever and then maybe never sell it. So, Because you just don't know how long you're going to keep it. Now, I guess depending on what the starting price is for that, rare brand you know like that one i think i started at 29.99 so i took 17.50 when i started it much higher but that's just kind of how i rolled with that one all right but yeah things uh things are going pretty well i'm feeling like another win have you ever been uh say say you have been on a run like runners will know this there's a period of time where you're really tired and then if you push through it, then you feel not tired at all. And that's what happened to me just now. Like I started watching, it was actually ADH Dave. I was watching his video. He, he made this really expensive sale and I started watching the video and he didn't get to the sale yet. He kept putting it off and off. And I was kind of like, oh, come on, Dave. Like, you know, that's, that's a tactic. You, you keep like the good juicy stuff towards the end. But I was watching it and then I was like, I need to put some content out, man. Like, I need to finish this video. I've been putting stuff off. Editing isn't as enjoyable as it has been in the past, and I'm not sure what the reason is for that, but I, I don't know. So then I got on it, and I flipped the camera on. I got through those combined orders. I got through one box, and now I've been running smoothly with these, you know, and trying to show you guys, like, some of these brands I'm picking up, and I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like I'm definitely going to earn my lunch today. That's for dang sure, like. And I think I know what I'm going to eat. There's a Chinese buffet that you can get uh, food to go. And I usually spend like five fifty on it. So it's a really cheap lunch and it's really good food. And I think that's what I'm going to go with. And then as my food's digesting, maybe I'll start editing the video. That's probably what I'm going to do. And when I'm done editing, I think I'm going to work out for a little bit. And then when I'm done working out, I think I'm going to come back up here and do some more uh, some more work. And then it'll be the end of the day, and then I'll go back home. So, Oh, and I got to go to the post office before I eat. So that's kind of annoying just because uh, there'll be a – sometimes there's a line there. And I know I'm going to have some returns to pick up, things like that. But uh, it, it's all right. And it's a, lot to, it's a lot of items to carry around, you know. But that cart does come in handy. That's going to be great. This was a Ralph Lauren 2XLT. It's the purple gingham plaid. It sold for 20-plus shipping. So still picking those up. I'm, I'll always be picking those up. I don't know if I'm ever going to not pick those up. Here's a Robert Graham. This is a geometric short sleeve button shirt. It went for $25.49 plus shipping. And that's awesome. Robert Graham, they're up and down. I mean, typically you can list them at $30 plus shipping and they'll be okay. This one, you know, a little less than that is what I took. And I'm okay with it. You know, I'm spending, I'll spend 10 bucks on a Robert Graham too. Sometimes I'll spend 15, but it's usually got to be a long sleeve and it's got to be pretty nice or have some type of material. And then, of course, if it's limited edition, I'll spend like 50, 75 for it. Just depends on the condition on those. But yeah, those are great too. This is a good one. This is Roar. It's an embroidered long sleeve button shirt, gray. It had a giant embroidery on the backside and it went for 25 plus shipping. So really awesome shirt here anything that you know that buckle style the affliction style that uh giant crosses and angel wings and things like that some skulls all that stuff is uh really good money especially when it's embroidered it's gonna go for a lot all right last box this is by the brand task that's t-a-s-c it's a pair of chino shorts it went for 16 plus shipping this brand does pretty well. They have like this bamboo cotton technology or something like that. Um, 
or maybe it's just bamboo fibers. I'm not really sure, but it sells pretty well. I've been picking it up for a long time. It's definitely not as good as it used to be, but it's still pretty decent. This is a Stetson shirt. So Stetson is a Western brand. This one's pretty wild looking though. It's got floral, red and white. Went for 25 plus shipping. So a lot of these shirts, this last little batch of shirts I've had uh, have been pretty good sellers. But yeah, this one, um, their Stetson jeans are good. I've sold Stetson women's jeans. I've sold the men's jeans. Um, it's just a really good brand all around. All right, next up, Travis Matthew again. They have some long sleeve button shirts. Uh, they're known for their polos, but their long sleeve button shirts sell as well. This was $17.49 plus shipping, and it's under the 12 ounce rate, so that's good. It's gonna be $5.32. What else we got here? $248.01. This one back too. So this is a Peter Millar. So this one went for $13.99 plus shipping. This is a long sleeve button shirt and I went super heavy on Peter Millar long sleeve button shirts. I think I got a bunch of them for $4 and it looks like they're gonna be about 14 plus shipping. So that's, that's pretty good because I was not sure about the Peter Millar long sleeve button shirts. They're not that great, trust me. I mean, four is like the most you're gonna wanna spend on that because I think I was pretty lucky to get 14 plus shipping. That's 23 bucks. They're just too, they're just basic, you know, but I mean, the name holds, holds some value though. So I, that's why I kind of took a chance on it. Like this one here, this is just a Brooks Brothers. Went for $9.99 plus shipping. So not a whole lot here. But yeah. Oh man. I'm feeling good though. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I think that run really helped. I think waiting to eat actually helped a little bit. The only thing I've had this morning is coffee, uh, Gatorade. I haven't had any breakfast, which usually I do eat breakfast. Still still running good, you know? My body still feels all right. I am definitely hungry, a little bit hungry, but still able to function. We got a couple really good jean sales coming up. This is a cinch white label. This cinch white label went for $29.99 plus shipping. And it looks like it's gonna be ground advantage. I've got these larger poly bags I've talked about. These are the 14 and a half by 19. Gyro pack. And yeah, this one's gonna be 784 ground advantage. Cinch white label is definitely one of their better ones. I used to pick them up pretty often. I kind of slowed down on picking cinch up just because like the green labels are no good. Um, you gotta get like the right size, right price on those. And they're pricing jeans up, you know. Most of the time jeans are like 8, 12, 16 or like, shoot, I've seen them for like 40 and even like $70 in the thrift store. It's like true religion or something. These thrift stores are pricing like crazy. This is just a plain area. It sold for uh, $39.99 plus shipping. So that is pretty great. Usually the FR ones sell for a little bit more. Um, this is a good size though. It's like a 32, I think, or 30, 30 or 32. Yeah, the better sizes sell well. Okay, now the last batch of inventory here is all really low priced items. So these are like definitely break even, you know, or maybe one to three dollar profit items just because they've been in my inventory for a long time. And my wife and I were, you know, moving to a new house. So our current house is going to be a rental. And I don't know how to set that up yet. I haven't looked at how to do the contracts or how to do any of that. But before we get to that stage, we're going to have a garage sale. So I thought about pulling a bunch of items out of my inventory and having a garage sale. I'm actually kind of leaning against that now as far as the clothing goes because I'm only gonna get probably $3 for most of the clothing and they're already listed, they're already here at this building. So ideally, you know, I would have had this garage sale before moving my inventory, then I could have just had them at my house already. But because they're already here and because I'm doing the promoted listings, because I'm discounting the items so aggressively, uh, I think it just makes sense to just sell them like this. I mean, this is 573 plus $9 shipping. So, you know, whether I spent a dollar on the shirt or whether I spent 
um, you know, four dollars. It's it's being sold. Like I'm getting it out of there, and and also when those prices are that low, like three to seven dollars listed price plus the shipping, people will buy multiple, and that always helps too. So I think that's just what I'm gonna do with that. I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna sell a lot of stuff. Like we have a bunch of other random items to sell. And I may record the garage sale, who knows? I may just do some clips of it. I made that video uh, last year about the garage sale and I had a lot of fun with it. It's a little awkward, but now that I have the microphone, it's gonna it would be a lot better. I know this video doesn't have the mic, but I think I'm close enough where the audio sounds okay. But yeah, it should be pretty fun. So that's probably gonna happen in the next like, maybe month or so. And we have a carport over there at the new house, so that's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be nice, you know. I don't know how hot it'll be, but at least it won't be in the direct sunlight. So, that's something. But maybe with that many bodies underneath there, it might be kind of hot. But I could get fans and stuff too, you know. I like to play music during the garage sales, so that it's almost like they're coming to a, a store, or like a hangout, you know. But yeah, garage sales, pretty fun. I still haven't made it out to them. I mean, we we've been sleeping in too. My wife and I, it's Seth, my son, he's been sleeping in. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like whatever. Not trying to not trying to make it so that it's not enjoyable. But you're definitely missing out on some profit, I imagine, by not going to garage sales. But, you know, it's like how much money do you need, though, right? Like how much do you really need to, to be happy? Now, when my son gets older, I'm definitely going to go to some more yeah, I thought I could go to some this year, and I still could, but I would have to have my wife on board to go, and she's been on call for work this month, so she's had, like, these temporary events she has to go check on and stuff, and it's been a bit of an issue with her, because she's been, you know, having to work so much, but we'll see. Maybe next month we'll go to one. I know Seth will love the toys, you know? He, lo he loves playing with toys, so we'll have a pretty good time. That's it. That's the last one. Okay. And I got it in two of those post office bags. Now they're jam packed, like to the brim, but uh, there we have it. So we got, and only tore it off once. There's all our labels for the thumbnail, right? Cool. Hey, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, next video, it's going to be maybe another what sold video. I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, look forward to it. And I had a good time talking with you guys. Make sure to comment down below, subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.